Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. This Honorable Department, Superior Court, County of Los Angeles is now in session. The Honorable Madeline Collins, Judge Presiding. Be seated and come to order, please. Will counsel for both sides approach the bench, please? Are we ready to begin selecting the jury? The state is ready, Your Honor. Your Honor, my client desires to waive a jury and to submit the case to the court. Very well. Mr. Tallon, does the state have any objection to the defendant's waiver of a jury trial? We'll be pleased to have Your Honor decide this matter. Young man. The law requires that I assure myself both that you are doing this voluntarily and that you understand what you are doing. Do you understand that the Constitution guarantees you the right of a jury trial and that only you can waive that right? I understand that, Your Honor. Do you know what it means to waive a jury trial? It means that you will decide the case. Has anyone promised you a specific result if I hear and decide your case? Or threatened you to get you to do this? No, ma'am. Ms. West, I take it you concur with your client's decision? I do, Your Honor. Very well. I will allow the waiver. Mr. Tallon, you may make your opening statement. If it please the court. You may proceed, Counselor. The horror story that Your Honor is about to hear is one that is been repeated in every community across this country. It's the story of a rape, not of a street rape, as that crime is more commonly known, but of an even more insidious, if that were possible, form of rape. Your Honor is about to hear the sordid details of what we call acquaintance rape. Before the events which I'm about to describe, Caroline Spencer lived by today's standards a rather sheltered life. All this changed, however, on that tragic day when Ronald Deacon forced his way into that sheltered life. Your Honor will hear the evidence, so I won't go into fine detail, but I will take this opportunity to give the court a bird's eye view of the evidence. All that I say, we fully expect to prove. One night in early August, as Miss Spencer sat alone, eating dinner at a table in the Cantina del Oro, this man deliberately reclaimed- Object to the conclusion, Your Honor. I have the right to draw reasonable inferences, if the court please. I don't believe I need to- for me, Mr. Tallon. Why don't you just stick to the evidence you expect to introduce? I'll try, Your Honor. Ronald Deacon spilled his drink on Caroline Spencer's dress. Now, whether by design or by accident, Deacon's conduct which ended in Caroline being taken to the hospital emergency room. After he spilled his drink, the defendant prevailed upon Caroline to allow him to buy her another drink and to sit at the table with her. Caroline was drinking iced tea, by the way. The defendant next persuaded Caroline to allow him to walk her home, using, ironically, the argument that it was unsafe for her to walk home alone. Once she was safely home, or so Caroline innocently but erroneously believed, this defendant, by trick and by sheer force, entered her apartment. He followed his forced entry with threats, including a specific threat to cut Caroline with a knife if she resisted him. These threats terrified Caroline. Like innocent prey caught in the hypnotic ritual of the venomous cobra, she was literally frozen with fear. Using these threats, and the fear created by his presence, the defendant forced Caroline into her bedroom. We will demonstrate how she was literally herded into that room like a lamb being prepared for slaughter. Once the defendant had Caroline where he wanted her, 
He brutally raped her. As the evidence unfolds, Your Honor, we'll see, I trust, that every element in the state's case is corroborated. At the conclusion of this case, there will be absolutely no question whatsoever about the fact that Ronald Deacon brutally raped Caroline Spencer. Accordingly, we will ask Your Honor to return a verdict of guilty as charged. Ms. West? Your Honor, I'm sure it would be more helpful at this point for the court to hear from the witnesses than from another lawyer. We'll waive our opening statement. Call your first witness, Mr. Tell. The people call Miss Caroline Spencer. Spencer, calling your attention to the 10th of August, 1987. In the early evening hours, where were you? Having dinner at the Cantino del Oro restaurant. Were you alone or with someone? I was alone at first, but after a while that changed. Tell Her Honor how that happened. As I was eating, this man brushed by me and spilled his drink on my dress. He apologized and he offered to pay for the cleaning bill, but I refused. So he left, but then he returned a few minutes later. What happened this time? He apologized again, and then he offered to buy me a drink. He said that it would make him feel better for having spilled his drink on me. He was very insistent, though he seemed friendly. Did you let him buy you that drink? Finally, I did let him buy me another iced tea, which is what I was drinking before. Do you know what was in the drink that this man spilled on you? Not exactly. I know that it had alcohol and some kind of fruit juice in it. The dress on which he spilled the drink, could you describe it, please? Yes, it was a pink silk dress. Let me show you what I have marked as People's Exhibit Number 1 for identification. Look at the exhibit. Tell the court what it is and how you recognize it, if you do. Yes, that's the same pink silk dress I was wearing that evening. Do you see where the drink was spilled? Right there. You can still see the stain. Is the dress in the same condition now as it was when you last saw it? No. What's different about it? It has this tag on it, and there's a, a patch of material that's been cut out of it. Oh, <clears throat> by the way, when was the last time you saw this dress? That night. What night? The night he tore it off me. Let's put this aside, and we'll come back to it later. Did there come a time where you left the restaurant with this man? Yes. Tell Her Honor how all that came about. After he brought the drink to me, he asked if he could sit down at my table. What did you say? Eventually, I said that he could. Eventually? I was a little reluctant at first, but he seemed like such a nice, polite person. So finally I gave in. Then what happened? Then we talked, just things in general, what I did for a living and what he did. What did he tell you he did for a living? 
He said that he worked in a bank in an executive training program. Did he tell you his name? Ron. What else did he tell you about himself? He said that he had moved here a couple of years ago from New York with his mother. He talked a lot about her. What did he tell you about her? He said that she was sick. And that he had just called her right before he spilled the drink on me. And that she was waiting dinner on him. Obviously, he wanted me to think he was some good, devoted son. She knows better than that, Your Honor. Is that an objection, Ms. West? To the extent that I can unring a bell, it is, Your Honor. Don't give us these personal observations, Miss Spencer. They aren't helpful. Now, after this, what happened next? I got up to leave. What did Ron do? He insisted on paying my check and walking me home. What had you had to eat? I had a taco and an iced tea, and also the iced tea that he bought me. After he paid your bill, what happened? He walked me to my apartment. Did anything unusual happen along the way? We stopped and got some ice cream. And after that? He walked me home. When you got there, what happened? He insisted on walking me up to my apartment door. When we got there, we said goodbye, and he left. Or at least, I thought he left. What did you do? I opened the door, and I entered my apartment. And then, when I was in, I tried to shut the door. But it, I couldn't. Something was blocking it. So I looked down and I saw his foot. What did you do? I don't know exactly. I think that I froze. I don't think I did anything. Then what happened? Then he came through the door. Who came? Ron. This man you've identified as Ron. Look around the courtroom and tell us if you see him. Of course I see him. I recognized him the moment I saw him in the lineup. That face will probably haunt me for the rest of my life. Objection, Your Honor. Objection. Spencer, using People's Exhibit Number Two, the diagram of your living room, please show the court where you were when the defendant put his foot in the door and then entered your apartment. Right about here. Take the marker that I have sitting on the easel there and put a small circle containing the number one at that point. Now, after the defendant was in your apartment, what did he do? He shut the front door, and he said that he was lonely, he wanted to talk. And what did you do? I told him to leave. I said that I had some friends coming over. I'd hoped that if he thought I had some friends coming over soon, that he would leave. I didn't want him there. Now, after you told him that, what did he do? He said, I didn't have any friends coming over. He told me not to be afraid or I would ruin everything. And then I remembered something he told me and I reminded him that his mother was waiting for him at home. And what was his reply? He said that his mother had died several years ago. What happened next, Miss Spencer? He came toward me. And did you do anything or call out to anyone? I couldn't. I was too frightened. He had said that he had a knife. Trace the path that the defendant took as he advanced on you. Now, which way was he facing? 
towards me. Put an arrow with a small two above it, indicating that. All right. Now, which way were you facing? Towards him. He was cornering me and I was backing up. All right, now put an arrow with a one on it, indicating the direction that you moved as you backed up. Now, as you and the defendant moved in this manner, was there any further conversation between you? He told me not to be afraid, and then he grabbed me. What did you do? I begged him to leave, and then I started crying. And what did he do? He told me again that he had a knife in his pocket, and that he would use it if I resisted. If I didn't resist or do anything foolish, I wouldn't get hurt. And what happened next? He took me into the bedroom. How did the defendant get you into the bedroom? He half pushed me, half carried me. I did not go in there on my own. Behind this, the exhibit that you've been referring to is another exhibit, People's Exhibit 2A. Would you put that on the easel, please? Caroline, would you like a glass of water? No, I'm fine. Now, after the defendant got you into the bedroom, what happened? He got me over to the edge of the bed. We struggled. And then he threw me on the bed. Mark a circle containing the number three at the point where you struggled by the bed. All right. I think that does it. Why don't you resume the stand? Now, Miss Spencer, as you struggled with the defendant, do you remember anything happening? Yes, I knocked over a lamp. And after that? He pushed me on the bed. What happened after he pushed you on the bed? He tore up my dress. Let me show you what I have marked as People's Exhibit 1A for identification and ask you if you recognize that object. Yes, it came from my dress. It's the button. Is it in the same condition now as it was when you last saw it? No. What's different about it? It was on my dress then. Did the defendant say anything as he tore at your dress? He repeated again that he had a knife in his pocket and for me not for me to do what he told me to so that I wouldn't get hurt. And then what happened? Miss Spencer, what happened next? Then he had me on the bed and he ripped my clothes off of me. Miss Spencer, please tell us in your own words what happened after this man got you down on the bed and got your clothes off you. How do I describe that? 
There are no words to describe that kind of terror. Please, tell Her Honor physically what happened. Everybody knows what happened. Why can't you just ask the people from the hospital? Do I have to be so specific? The law requires that you describe exactly what happened. He raped me. That is what happened. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. You can't give us your conclusions, Miss Spencer. You must tell us what he did. If you can't, I'll have to dismiss this charge. He forced himself on me. He made me have intercourse with him, and now he's laughing at me. Forget about him. Think of yourself. What are you trying to say? Something that obviously no one in this courtroom wants to listen to. I am trying to tell you what this man did to me. And as if that weren't enough, I have to sit here and degrade myself further by, by fulfilling some kind of stupid legal requirement. Did the defendant penetrate you? Objection! What kind of justice is this? When I, everything depends on whether I am specific about one word or one phrase. Do I have to drag myself into the slime of his world? Will that make you believe that he's more guilty if I do? All right, fine. And that's what I have to do. Yes, he penetrated me. He invaded the very core of my being. No man had ever done that before. I was a virgin. <laughs>